Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. Amongst one of the many things I purchased recently for uh, projects to do on this channel was the turret and probot playset. This is something I never had as a kid but always wanted. And I managed to uh, pick this one up from a, a friend that I met on uh, Twitter, Dan Tutil, uh, and I'm pretty pleased with it. The only problem with it is it's absolutely filthy and as a child, Dan and his brother really went to town on the, the toy. So it's filthy, it's covered in pen and crayon. You can see there's sort of a purpley green uh, sort of pen colour all over this door. Uh, it's got crayon all over the top of it and it's just been, uh, well, let's say well loved. It's not in bad condition but it's well loved. Uh, it's all here, everything's here, it's just dirty. You can see the amount of dirt and grime on this. So uh, what I want to do is uh, give this a thoroughly good clean and then repair anything that is broken. One thing immediately that I can see is uh, going to cause me a few problems is the uh, peg that the ProBot stands on has been bent at some point and it's, uh, yeah, it's quite nastily bent there so hopefully that will be able to be fixed. Uh, but the first thing that we need to do is obviously clean off some of this grime. So I'm actually, before I do that I'm going to take uh, the ProBot sort of motion bit off the bottom so that I can take everything out and clean it as uh, best I can. And again, luckily with all of these Star Wars toys, they're pretty easy to do. This has just got two screws on the bottom so I can easily just unscrew this, take the bits apart uh, and make it much easier to clean once it's in pieces uh, than uh, just trying to work around sort of awkward bits of plastic. Once we have the toy in pieces, it also gives me a better idea of what's gone wrong uh, with this peg. As you can see, it's been bent quite nicely. If I was to try and bend this back just normally, chances are it will snap. So I'm going to show you a way to uh, bend these bits back to normal without breaking them. So first up, let's go and give everything a good clean. I'm going to uh, clean this all in hot soapy water to take off most of the grime. And then uh, whatever dirt is left uh, may require some special techniques to uh, get off uh, the pen and crayon. But we'll see what happens after we've given the thing an initial clean in hot soapy water. So now I've given everything a good clean, there are still a few small marks all over this uh, base that I want to try and get rid of. So I'm going to use some uh, lighter fluid here and a Q-tip. Just uh, put a little bit of lighter fluid on the end of the Q-tip. And you can see on uh, this portion of the uh, base there's some black marks. Now these look more like a sort of pencil or pen. So uh, normally if you get a bit of lighter fluid you can sort of quite firmly rub uh, the uh, marks and they will start to shift. As you can see those ones have actually gone uh, pretty easily straight away. It's the sort of stuff that just normal washing won't get rid of and they'll just need the lighter fluid just to sort of help uh, lift it off a bit. So uh, I'm going to do a second pass all over this base now and just take off any extra marks that I can. Uh, this normally takes a little while but on something that you want to look white it's worth doing. So there we have the base all clean and all the other bits are clean. I got off about 90% of the marks. Most of the dust and stuff was easy. It just washed off uh, with water, sort of hot soapy water and a bit of uh, kitchen cleaner. Uh, there are a few marks left. There's some staining here on the bottom, which is uh, a pen or marker pen or something. So uh, in the future, I may try and uh, remove that using the uh, uh, Oxy Spot Cream that I've shown you in previous videos for re removing stains from plastic. Uh, this plastic seems fairly similar to the stuff that uh, the Oxy works best on. So. Uh, yeah, when I've got a bit more time, I think I'll probably go back and do that. But overall, the base is actually looking a lot better. So the next thing we need to sort out is the uh, post that holds up the ProBot. This has been bent uh, at some time. Uh, as it sticks out of the top there, uh, that's obviously a weak point where you know you can just cl clearly sort of bend it and it will you know, get sort of held by the base and almost snap. So uh, what we're going to do here is try and bend this back to being as straight as we possibly can. Now you don't want to just go ahead and bend this. Uh, what you've got to do is uh, warm it up first. So uh, I'm going to go and get the kettle and a 
cup and use some hot, uh, well almost boiling water and we will see if we can straighten this out without breaking it. So to bend this back what I've got here is a mug and a tea towel and I'm going to fill the mug with some freshly boiled water. So if you're going to do this do be careful this is hot water and what you've got to do is you've got to dunk this bit of plastic in the water just for a short amount of time. You don't want to dunk it in for too long because you can damage the plastic. You just want it long enough that the plastic starts to soften. Quickly dab it on the tea towel so you're not getting covered in boiling water and you can then gently start to bend this back to the correct shape. Do this slowly, don't do it all in one go, just do it little bits at a time. So you can see that's already starting to get straight again. So dunk it back in the boiling water. Again, wipe off the water on the tea towel and start to bend it back. And just bend it a little at a time and you will end up getting it pretty straight. It's never going to be perfect. You can never uh, remove all of the marks from this, but you should be able to get it so that it all works and that the uh, ProBot base is back to a functioning state. So there you go, that's starting to look pretty straight. So just do it a few more times and we'll get that straightened up. If you do this without using the hot water or warming up the plastic, it's more than likely going to snap and then you will have the problem of trying to find a replacement one. So now that we have the uh, peg straight and we can go ahead and put this base back together. It's a fairly straightforward job. You've got five main parts and if you start by turning the base over onto the bottom side so that you can see the, the underside of the, uh, the base, uh, you take the peg that we've straightened and you push it through uh, this strange bit of, uh, I don't know what you would call that, but it's an arm with a, with a definite cross uh, shape at one end. And this goes through uh, the right hand most hole, like so. Uh, then there's a piece which is the sort of spring mechanism. This goes over the top of that. Uh, it doesn't actually matter which way around this goes, it's a sort of universal piece. That just needs to slot over that. And we can then screw this piece into place uh, to start the sort of holding everything correctly so let's just screw that one together. Now that we've got these two bits in place the next piece to get in is the sort of control mechanism which is uh, this piece here. This goes on the top side if we turn it over we just have to slot that in the middle hole like that and keep the fingers on it so that it stays in place. Uh, and then you have to rotate it into one position so let's rotate it all the way around to the left hand side and we'll hold it like that and then this section uh, has a definite sort of left and right to it. You can see that there's a square hole on the bottom and a slight notch taken out of one side, which coincides with uh, the peg on the, the uh, control mechanism. So you just have to line that up. And also there's a small peg here which needs to slot into this. It's a little bit fiddly, but it's uh, fairly straightforward once you know what you're doing. Then we can just screw this all back together. So put the one screw in and that's the mechanism all back together. So now the mech is all back together. Basically if we move this handle it turns the post and then at some point uh, there's a spring mechanism which is what this strange peg is for which is activated by the uh, semicircular bit here and it pops the peg up a bit so when the probot is in place and you swing this round uh, the probot is fired off and it looks like uh, Han has shot it. So we can go ahead and put the rest of this back together now. The ProBot looks more complicated than it actually is, it's just a few component parts and they can only be put together in one way. So here we have the head section and you'll notice there are three uh, pegs and three holes and these only fit together in one way so there's no way of getting that wrong. So there's the head part done. And for doing the legs, the legs can go in any way you like, you just have to sort of slot them in uh, and put them in any combination that you think works best. There doesn't seem to be a right or wrong way of doing this. Some of the legs are straighter than others uh, and some have got a little kink to them so it doesn't really matter which way around they go. Uh, and then again uh, this top section can only go on one way. There are four holes uh, which coincide with the four pegs so uh, you can't get this wrong. It's got to go together in uh, this one method. And then we have the turret itself. There's just a door that pings onto the sort of main body section of the turret and then the gun part itself which just slots on the top but this doesn't even click in place. There's a small piece of plastic there that will make a clicking noise when you rotate the turret. 
uh, but that's about it. Uh, and then again, this just slots on the base and it can go and only go around one way. There is clearly a place for it to sit in like so. And here we have the playset all together. As you can see, it does look really nice. This is one I would have absolutely have loved to have had as a kid. I saw it in many a catalogue and thought, yes, I want that. But unfortunately, I never got it. I really loved the ProBot as a, as a child. And I actually have quite a few of these in my collection already, just the ProBot. This is the first time I've ever owned the Turret and ProBot set uh, in my collection. So I'm actually really pleased to have it. It's got a few little gimmicks to it. Obviously, you can put the man in the turret at the top. And when you turn uh, that turret, it makes a sort of clicking noise. There's also a little hatch on the side, as I've showed you. And you can open that. And there's, uh, as you can see, someone waiting inside. So that's good. But the main gimmick, of course, is the Pro robot part of this. So if I move the lever that Han is now standing on, as I twist it around the probot turns and then at the end it jumps up and Han has shot it and managed to destroy it. It's quite a sort of simple little gimmick but it does work surprisingly well and the fact that there's no electronics or anything it's just a sort of simple spring mechanism. It's quite a nifty little feature. There are uh, there is one other Hoth playset that you can get, um, which would be quite nice to have along with this because then you can have a, a bigger scene. But as it stands, I do like this playset. Very nice, and it's pretty easy to fix as you saw. So if you ever buy one of these and it's got the uh, bent post on it, uh, that's probably the worst thing that you're going to have to fix. Everything else is just bits of plastic that will need cleaning. So I hope that video has been of interest to you, and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, Toy Poloi. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Poloi on Twitter and Facebook.